Good afternoon. Uh, let's rise up for our prayers. We welcome the health presenter. We are praying. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for this opportunity we have to listen to your servant speak about health. May you put your words in his mouth and may they be relevant unto us who are living in this generation. I pray in Jesus' name. Right. Uh, we welcome Elder Professor Omondi Oyo to take us through the health talk this afternoon. I hope you will be blessed. Good afternoon. I'm saying good afternoon. I don't know why you are so few today. I hope I didn't say something bad yesterday. <laughs> you know, when you are doing health talk, these things, you. every time I come, I'm either abroad, or when I park, I park outside because I might live in a hurry. Because there might be no, people might not be wanting to see me after that. But uh, <clears throat> I want to say that I'm happy to be here again. This is the second time I'm speaking in Lovington Church uh, in the camp meeting for, on health. The last time you were outside there in the tent, but now you are in this beautiful place. But yesterday was my second time in this church. The first time I came when there was a a nice wedding, and I was one of the elders involved in the wedding. But uh, I'm glad that Lovington Church invited me. As a matter of fact, I did not want to come. I did not want to come. But my wife was so excited about the invitation, that's why I came. <laughs> she was invited that you are able to invite me. So yesterday, just to recap, we while looking, I was giving you a prescription. The, uh, a phenomenal prescription on health. And uh, we agreed that, or rather I suggested that one of the ways we can give glory to God is in the manner in which we take care of our bodies. But in the way we take care of our bodies, you can either die before your time or you can live beyond your time. And we were able to give biblical examples of those guys who died before their time and those who died ahead of time. We also said that when you die, at least according to how we teach in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, you don't go to heaven immediately. You will mark time in the grave waiting for Jesus to come and take us home. So given that we'll be marking time there and we're not going to heaven direct, we can as well spend as long as possible in this world, isn't it? But we'd better do it in good shape. So we said that, um, I'm just recapping yesterday, that uh, if you want to do that, need to drink right. That's what we said yesterday. Secondly, you avoid drugs, tobacco and alcohol. Thirdly, you eat right. That's what we said yesterday. But we also said that there's no point of listening. Every year you listen you come to the camp meeting to have health talk, and occasionally you have health programs in your churches. But time comes the decision. Make a decision on how you are going to live. It's pointless to have a lot of knowledge when it doesn't impact positively on your life. So I gave you the opportunity to think, and I told you, you can do, even if it's your appetite for meat, for tea, for coffee, you can do all things through Christ that 
Christ can take control of your appetite. So today, I want us to look at uh, the Adventist health message. That's what we, I told you we're going to look at today. So we want to find out what is the Adventist health message. What is it? What message do we have for the world? Yesterday, I was mainly basing my presentation on the scriptures. Today, I'm going to use the spirit of prophecy books. Let us pray. Father, speak to us clearly that we understand. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So what is the basis of the Adventist health message? Number one, I, I told you yesterday that the Adventist health message is not any health message spoken by an Adventist. Are you getting me clearly? Somebody can go to his house and think something, but because he's an Adventist, he comes and says, that is the Adventist health message. So the Adventist health message is Bible-based. Bible, because Jesus came that we may have life and have it to the full. And in 1 Corinthians, he says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it to the glory of, and that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, that you honor your temple. The second thing, the basis, the foundation of the Adventist health message is spirit of prophecy. And it originated and strongly supported by Mrs. Ellen G. White. It was founded more or less at the same time with the founding of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And the Adventist message then was contrary to the beliefs of the day. And the basis, when you go outside there, where the books are being sold, the books that you should have, have the Adventist health message, is Ministry of Healing, and the second one, Councils on Diet and Food. Thirdly, the Adventist health message, this is one of the things that I want you to know, is strongly supported by modern science. What have I said? Strongly by? Because God also inspires science. So if there's something stated which is not supported, the Adventist health message is supported by modern science. Anything which is not scientific may not qualify there. The Adventist health message, I've told you, is sourced from the Bible, from the writings of Ellen White, I've told you, Ministry of Healing, and Councils on Diet and Foods. Some of our books that you will get some of the messages is Seventh-day Adventists Believe. But also, some of the issues that we believe are supported in peer-reviewed scientific papers, published in rep reputable journals. I don't say published in the Daily Nation. I said published in reputable, not in Daily Nation. Re Daily Nation is not reputable because they can write today, tomorrow they deny and apologize. They can apologize. You know, one of the things that make it difficult for us to push the Adventist health message is that people think that when you uh, have started, when you accept the Adventist health message, you una ingiza bonga points. Una ingiza nini? The more vegetables you eat, the more holy you become. Have you heard that? But I want to tell you that Adventist health message does not give you any favor with God. It does not earn you brownie points. It does not replace your spiritual commitment. You know, there are some people who just eat ugali, skuma, skuma, ugali, ugali, skuma, and they think that puts them in favor with God, even if they are the most arrogant, snobbish people around your environment. 
but it replaces even your responsibility of humility, being a good Christian, and all the ethics that we talk, ethos that we talk about. But the, when you don't take coffee and tea, it does not matter even if you beat your wife every night, you'll still go to heaven. It does not remove all the things you are learning here. Are you getting me? Now that you don't score anything, it does not, because you cannot justify yourself by law, salvation is by grace alone. It is not even an excuse to do whatever you like. Since words cannot save us, some attempt to believe it's okay to do whatever you like. That when you are subscribing to the issues that we are going to talk about, that you can do whatever you like. But you should not use your freedom to indulge in sinful affairs. It is not judgmental. You should not think yourself holier than the other person. I'm just giving you examples. That if you are not eating roast meat, that now you are holier than somebody who is eating roast meat, even if you are a known thief in your environment. The only thing that there's nothing, what I'm trying to say, there's nothing that makes you more spiritual because you are, you are uh, subscribing to the health message. The only thing theological about food is that when you have more than enough, you share with another person who does not have. Amen? So religion is not abstaining from food, but sharing food with us, those who don't have it. But why are we on this Adventist health message? So what it is? Number one, it is balance. It is not extreme, both in indulgence and restriction. You know, there are those who don't eat meat, but like when I go for camp meeting, you know, the reason why I didn't want to come for this camp meeting, I only go for one camp meeting outside and then another new life. So by coming from this one, I was going to miss the one for new life. But I'd already gone to to one in, in, in the Kenya Lake Conference. But there they don't, it's good, there's no beef up there. But they allow you eggs you want. <laughs> they can even bring you Magira in a one person. So, Adventist health message is chance extremes, both in indulgence and restriction. I also saw another Adventist who was admitted at because he had abstained from everything until he was almost dying, was admitted for malnutrition. So you can be extreme both in indulgence and in restriction. As a matter of fact, 10 years ago, the, the extremes, extreme subscriber to the Adventist Earth message, there's one whose children were taken away by the state in Canada and in Australia. Uh, Australia because of violation of the rights of children. They stopped their children from eating certain things until the children became malnourished. So Adventist health message is not extreme. There's a time we had an Adventist who wanted to go and do a health seminar. Health seminar for the prison staff. So he was a person who was going to give the Adventist health message. But the then commissioner of prisons refused that we cannot bring this guy to bring a dentist to talk about health to our staff. Because the person himself was not looking healthy. <laughs> he was extreme. So you know, the message is as important as the messenger. Our message is balanced. Very balanced. I think I've covered this balancedness in a, in, in, in a nutshell. The second thing 
at our Adventist health message is holistic. It covers the spiritual, social, mental, and physical health. That balance. In fact, the WHO defines health as a total a, a state of complete well-being, both spiritually, social, mentally, and physically. You cannot say that you are healthy just because you are physically okay. You should, your social relationships must be good. If you are having, you are not speaking to your wife and at home, but you are not, there's absence of disease in your body, and occasionally you don't even bring tithe to loving tone, you are, spiritually you are questionable. You cannot say that you are healthy. You, you are not healthy. So we look at all these places. Number one, spiritually, we need to be spiritually well, to, well in, in good health. Because God through the Holy Spirit can only communicate through our minds. And it is important, therefore, that our minds be clear. Spiritual. Secondly, we have an obligation to learn all we can about salvation, about living and to prepare for service. This is only possible with a clear mind. If you are having bad relationships with your neighbors, you cannot have a clear mind, even if you bring a guest speaker from heaven to speak here. You will not understand what he's saying. You must be mentally clear, healthy. We have been put here in the world to interact with others, to be loving and lovable Christians, to prove on the welfare of all with whom we, con we come into contact with. This is a message we are talking about, the Adventist health message. But we need to be as healthy as we can for as long as possible so as not to deprive others of the service we can offer. The reason why the health ministry exists is that the Adventists should be in a state, a good state of health, so that the Lord can use him as a vehicle to pass his message to the world. So we need to be here as long as possible, I told you. As long as we should not reduce our lifespan by the manner in which we indulge in things. So that's why we advocate for number one, regular exercise. Regular exercise. There are many benefits for exercise that we may not be able to talk about, but it is effective in weight control, improved digestion, and uh, reduced depression, and the reduced risk of various cancers and heart disease. A regular exercise is not an option. It is an essential. It's essential for maintaining optimal health, both physically and mentally. You have no option but to engage in exercise. If you think it was optional, you have no option. In fact, if there's an invention waiting to be, something waiting to be invented, is if you can get a capsule and you put exercise inside there and tell people to take, that will be the biggest invention. <laughs> that will be the biggest invention. And this is one of the things we advocate in the Adventists. You have to exercise. So some of the time that we spend time with Adventist men in the morning, come, learn how to live nicely with your wife, and so forth and so on, I think you will do well to take them to exercise at Sir Jeffrey's club there'll be more lovable people at home than sitting here for one hour listening. <laughs> because it will improve, reduce depression. They'll become lovable and loving. You know, exercise makes you to produce a hormone called endorphins in you. And this is a natural mood elevator, which you need to get for free with the exercise. You don't need to, a prescription from a doctor. The second, we recognize the benefits of sunlight. The benefits of, you know these days there are so many floods coming around here. Recently, uh, a, a marketer pushed me to go and see one. I asked him, but where 
there's no place here for even hanging clothes. He said, you don't need hanging clothes to hang clothes in the sun. You'll have a, a washing machine and a dryer so you can stay in your house without getting out even in Nairobi and not benefit from free sunlight. But sunlight promotes health and healing. It is involved in health production of vitamin D. You know vitamin D is good. If you don't have enough, you'll get osteoporosis. One of the tablets produced in tons in people in Europe and America that they take after aspirin that I told you yesterday is vitamin D because they are not exposed to the sun. You know, there are people in places like Sweden and Norway who spend their life, most of their life is in darkness. But it is painful that even here, very soon, we love to talk to you of the benefit of the sun. The sun should also be allowed to enter into your environment in the home to help clear certain germs and molds that can hang around in your home if the sun is not going inside there. We also recognize the importance of water. We agreed yesterday that water is the most important beverage. If you are to drink right, you drink a lot of water. One of, if you can count the glasses of water you are drinking, it means you are not drinking enough. It's the same thing with forgiveness. If you can count the number of times, then you are not forgiving. You should forgive until you cannot count. And it is superior to all other fluid sources of drink, including fruit juices. In fact, I told you that there's a time I was living in New Orleans, so I used to have the pre the privilege once in a while of visiting the Americans, and they used to offer me water as one of the options of what you can drink when you go to their houses. And I used to find it ridiculous that somebody can offer you water when you are gone as a visitor. But I've realized that they were giving me one of the most precious drinks. I used to consider water as one of the things I'll take along with other things, not knowing that is the main thing that I should take. It recognizes the importance of fresh air. You know, fresh air is essential for oxygen. It provides oxygen, which is essential for all the bodies. And we should also advocate and fight against pollution. Let me go back to the water again. It is not in our interest as Adventists to keep quiet when the water sold in our supermarkets and the water provided in our tubs is not fresh, it's not, it's polluted. We must demand for good county governance that provides for safe water, which you can drink. Water can be a source of many problems. In fact, it's so shameful nowadays that after every party, we have to admit some people from cholera, for cholera. You know, there's an endemic cholera. You can go for a wedding and imagine they are with the cholera. Even last week, one of my colleagues had cholera. And now cholera is not for Madari uh, and Korokocho. It is also sitting, waiting to explode in Lovington. I know this is strange. <laughs> okay. Cholera is not Lovington. Things are very bad. Don't, don't, some of you are, hey, okay. You don't believe me until when you come from even this camp meeting with the cholera. So you must also participate in fresh air. One of the things that people don't value very much is rest. Rest is critical for body, healthy body and mind. Rest is more than sleeping or ceasing our regular work. You know, there are some people who consider a waste of time to rest. You know, your head elder is called Steve, he's my cousin, and he rarely rests. <laughs> <laughs> he 
he has to collapse to rest. <laughs> but I've been preaching to him the importance of just resting. You know, sometimes they find me that I've gone somewhere just doing nothing. And I told him there's wisdom in doing nothing. I don't have to be busy. I'm always very busy. So if I get an opportunity to do nothing, that is the most valuable time. There used to be a place in Rift Valley. These days it was invaded by politicians. The great Rift Valley Lodge. When it was started, when it was still in the hands of the people, you could go there. There was no network for, for telephone. They didn't have newspapers. There was no TV. So when I wanted just to have a me time and rest, and I, you know sometimes for me to rest, I have to switch off my phone, but I feel guilty. So I want to rest when my phone is on and there's no network. <laughs> but when politicians started going there, these days there's network, there's TV, there's telephone. I have to look for another place to go and rest. Rest. You know, rest, weariness. You know, like now, for the last two years, if you watch TV, there's overstimulation. Personal issue, problems. The media here can cause you weariness, even when you're not tired. Me, I don't watch them anymore. I don't watch anything. So if you start discussing me things that were said in the TV last night, you'll find me blank. But don't blame me, because my life itself is troubling. So why should I trouble myself further? <laughs> the other thing that how the media can tire you down is when you listen to politicians always abusing one another. To the extent that when I'm teaching doctors in the medical school, I have to teach them the art of being good and just being polite, which is becoming scarce. Even in the church board, people are shouting. No goodness. Yeah? No goodness. To the extent now that one of the, I'm going to move after this committee from the ministry, this ministry of, of, of talking about health things, I'm starting a new ministry called Peace Building, Healing, and Reconciliation. So that I can reconcile the different factions in the Adventist church. You need to have peace, healing, and reconciliation. You need this ministry. You can see me outside here so that we can, you can join me. <laughs> but even, even if you don't join me, I'll go alone. Because I will go with Jesus. Jesus told his disciples in Mark. 6 verse 31, come with me by yourself to a quiet place and get some rest. We must have periods of rest because they provide quietness for communion with God. When you are still, one of the reasons why you don't listen, we don't hear the voice of God because we are never still. If you want to hear the voice of God, you must be still. You must have me time when you are thinking about nothing. You have to get an opportunity where you are thinking about nothing so that God can speak to you. Because even the Lord himself set aside the seventh day of the week for us to rest. But I've found that the Sabbath day also constitutes a lot of restlessness. Church board, the upper, emergency church board, I don't know what, 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 elders, let us, uh, let us consult. I don't know what, what. So even that day is worse than my Fridays. So I have to create another time for myself. You know, when the Lord says that we meet on Sabbath and rest, it does not say we bring so much restlessness. What is wrong if you have a church board on a Monday? Is there anything wrong? Or if the deacons meet on Wednesday in the evening. Will they die? <laughs> Why must Sabbath school meet, Sabbath school council meet on Saturday afternoon? Why must they? Discussing hard things on Saturday is not rest. That's restlessness. 
we value rest. Don't introduce restlessness. The Adventist health message, recognize, I told you that's why I parked outside. <laughs> so that when I leave here, I just go to my car and, and drive very quickly. The only thing I didn't do, I cannot afford because I didn't come with a drive because I cannot afford. But I can try to drive very fast. The Adventist health message, recognize the importance of sleep. In addition to rest, we need six to eight, ten hours of sleep each night. When I'm talking about rest, I'm removing sleep. You must create time to rest. Outside sleeping. Because you know, when you are sleeping, some things can intrude in your mind, which brings restlessness. You need six to ten hours each night, depending on the individual and the type of work you perform. You require a comfortable bed, a comfortable temperature, and good ventilation in the bedroom. You know, the most expensive and comfortable item in your house would be your bed. You know, some of you, the most expensive is the TV. <laughs> Many of you is the chairs. But how long do you sit on that chair? Some of you don't even sit on it. If you want the most comfortable, the most expensive thing in your house, it should be there. That's where you spend most of your time. Even if you have no chairs in the sitting room, who cares? You can stand eating. Stand, eat and while standing. You require a comfortable bed so that you can rest for six to eight hours. Because if you don't sleep, you'll have many problems. Those who don't sleep enough, let me tell you, I don't want to talk about that, but I wanted to say this about sleep. Number one, when you don't sleep, if you are an accountant, you lose judgment. You can miss small figures. If you are a driver, you can lose concentration and you become a dangerous driver. If you are a husband, you become irritable and an unlovable person. Are you getting me? If you are a lady, even some of your beauty goes if you don't sleep enough. The other thing that uh, the, what recognized in the Adventist health message is regular meal times and avoidance of snacking. You should have specified time for each meal. And you should know that sometimes most of the things that we eat in between, we don't require it. It's just excess baggage. I told you that because of snacking yesterday, I didn't finish the story. I went for metabolic check and I was told to reduce 10 kilos. Then I was told, how will you reduce it? They told me. But I went overboard and lost so many kilos until people started saying that he's sick, he's dying or something. You know, snacking impacts the emptying of the stomach. You have excess calories, which leads to obesity. And obesity is a major contributor of hypertension, diabetes, uh, arthritis, and several other things. Avoid eating before bedtime. I don't want to say many things about it. We talked about this thing, avoid harmful drugs. We need, even before you take a tablet, you should look is it possible to avoid taking this medicine? It is preferable. But one of the problems that I'll tell you as a physician is that if a patient comes to you and you don't write a prescription, that is the hardest thing to do. Because this patient will say that you didn't do anything and will go to the next doctor. So sometimes you just have to write something. But <laughs> I tell my students that the most courageous thing that a doctor can do is to write no prescription. But patients will think that you are the most bogus doctor in town. They want something. Those drugs, some of them are harmful. We talked about avoidance of tobacco. We don't have a problem in, within here. But you are interacting with people in your environment. When the Lord educates you in the camp meeting on any issue, it is up to you also to go and be a crusader.
in your various areas of operation. These are one of the most intoxicating drugs, and I told you it's one of the drugs which is legalized by the government. Alcohol is one of the most widely used drugs, and we are advocate avoidance of alcohol in, in our health message. Alcohol is given so many things, but I don't want to say anything. But you have heard people talking about red wine being good for your health, for your heart. You have heard that. You know, it is not the wine itself which is good. It is the, the cover of the grape, which you can get from grape juice. Alcohol is never good for anything. I told you you can kill a child. Just one glass will kill a baby. And as you drink it, it keeps on killing your brain cells. Avoid coffee. We are just repeating these things because these things happen. Tea, coffee, and other popular drinks are stimulants and irritants. And they cause headache, the heart beating very fast, indigestion, and trembling, among other evils. There are people who just tremble like this. Eh? And they are addictive. Coffee is addictive. There are, there are some substances called uh, nitrosamines in coffee, which can also cause cancer. To bladder cancer is associated with nitrosamines, and uh, heart diseases are associated with some of them are treated with coffee. Coffee is also found in Coca-Cola. And we just go on mentioning them once in a while. We have to keep on mentioning it. Avoidance of tea drinking. You know, Ellen White did not differentiate between tea and coffee. Because both of them have got, have got the same problem. Tea may have some antioxidants, but there are many other sources or antioxidants which are not harmful like tea. Tea and coffee will lead to a higher blood pressure. So if you have hypertension and you're taking tea and coffee, your dose of medicine goes higher. If you are f fat there, it goes even higher. If you take a lot of salt, it goes even higher. If you take sugar in a lot of sugar, you are even pushed to diabetes. And thereby, you, what we are saying yesterday, you die before your time. You can engage reverse gear on some of these diseases by the way, the decision you make when you open your mouth to eat. The, one of the things we talk about is consumption of fresh fruit and vegetables. For grains, fruits, nuts, and vegetables, we agreed yesterday. Consume the diet which was chosen to us by the Creator. But we need to prepare them in a simple and natural manner so that they can nourish. One of the things we have lost as Seventh-day Adventists are the better living centers. These are the centers where women ministry could come and be told how to prepare nutritious diets using the vegetables, available vegetables and foods, and, and, and fruits. So that they become variety. You know you can chase away people from your house by the menu in your house. You know there's a time you know, ukienda kama kambi, sangino naona maneno mingi. There's a time I went to kambi, kambi, uko ndani, kisi ndani, ndani, ndani. So, ugali, managu, managu, ugali, ugali, managu. Ata baka, <laughs> una nguvu ya kuongea wakati wa makambi, and I was the main speaker. <laughs> <laughs> you need to train people how to make foods which are good. Vegetarian food does not mean ugali, skuma wiki, skuma wiki, ugali, ugali, skuma wiki, skuma wiki, ugali. If you go to Kawangware here, you'll get so many vegetables which you can make when you come here on a Sunday, even here, you can learn how to make good foods and uh, people will be happy in your place. In fact, there's a time I was almost ran out of a crusade 
because of the food that was being served there. You know, eating, let me tell you, when I'm coming to talk about food, eh, I'll tell you that eating is one of the most enjoyment activities that you can engage in as a human being. So the food itself, the whole experience must be enjoyable. Yeah? There's even a difference between a vegetarian and a herbivore. Don't just put a concussion of green things, then put salad, then tell me eat. No, I'm not herbivorous. I told you yesterday our teeth was not meant to be carnivorous. But also we are not herbivorous. Go and check if the cow teeth and yours are the same. They should be prepared in a simple and natural manner and at most... They should be nourishing. Nicely prepared vegetables and fruits in their season will be beneficial because fruits are essential to health. So vegetable, fruits and grains, that's what should constitute your main part of your diet. This one you found in page 380, Council of Diets and Foods. You know, there are several benefits. You know, there's a place in, in, in California where the, lo the people who live longest in, this, uh, in the world are found. It's a community of Adventists. I'm sure you know, I've read about them. It's because of the diet, what they eat. Other than diseases that reduce the lifestyle, the lifespan of Africans, even the food they eat sometimes is interesting. But I told you that what you eat is nothing compared with what I saw in New Orleans. Hmm? I don't want to emphasize more. Consumption of nuts, we talked about nuts, fruits, and vegetables. When pro pro properly prepared, olive nuts supply the place of butter and flesh meat. Olive nuts. I don't know what, uh, olive nuts. You have seen them. In Lavington, you must know those things. You know, <laughs> when I'm talking in new life, they may not know. But Lavington, you know. You know, here you don't define so many things. Eating whole nuts reduces the rates of heart attack and helps reduce the cholesterol in the body. And they are essential source of omega-3 fatty acids. And that's why you drink fish oil all the time. But you can get it from nuts. Then dried fruits, the resins, prunes, uh, apples. These are recommended in the books, Council for Diet and Foods. You'll buy it outside there. I don't want to speak so much about them. Then there's a place for whole grains and whole wheat breads. Of course, here in this country, we are at a disadvantage because somebody will just take the usual refined wheat, and you put a dye, and then say, put in the supermarket, and say, whole grain bread, then outside, and I wake up to apaki, some grain outside. <laughs> I don't know whether you are the ones who buy, who buy it, Uko Eastlands, but do you get such bread these sides? White flour is lacking in nutritive elements to be found in the bread made from whole wheat. Its use is neither helpful nor economical. Just take wheat the way it is and grind it without making it, uh, refining it any further. It also helps with fiber. And fiber improves your digestive system. And you know when you have regular bowels, you reduce the incidence of colon cancer. You deal the risk of colon cancer. And you know colon cancer is associated with those guys who eat constipating diet. But the way cigarette smoking is associated with lung cancer, eating meat is also strongly associated with cancer of the colon. Similarly, <laughs> Mrs. Kidenda is looking at me because she knows that every time I go to a house, 
not uh, sabotaging myself, I might just still ask for it. <laughs> but I recognize the risk of colon cancer. We need, uh, it advocates, the Adventist health message advocates for dairy, moderate use of dairy products. You know, the reason why we are saying this, you know, once you, you know, when you are talking, when you are building this church, as much as metals are strong, you cannot have a window built with metal. Is it possible to create a window of metal? You must have glass, you must have sand, you must have cement, you must have metal and tiles. So we are recognizing that there is something you will lose when you don't eat animal proteins. So that's why you have to look for it here and there. And that's why you must combine fruits, grain, vegetables, and with some dairy products so that you can get a wholesome meal. A time is coming. You know, there's very types of, many types of vegetarians. A time is coming when there will be no dairy products, there will be no eggs and so forth. But that will be the time of trouble. The time of trouble is coming. But before the time of trouble comes, get all the elements that you need from food. <laughs> Don't bring the time of trouble closer. It is coming anyway, but it is not yet. I'm about to finish so that we can interact, maybe. Yesterday I didn't want any questions. We need to use uh, sugar uh, uh, in moderate and avoid use of milk uh, and, uh, and sugar combinations. Actually, we have too much sugar in the food that we eat. When you eat cake, it's just sugar. Anything, sugar. Pudding, sugar. In fact, sugar has been found to be even more dangerous than even salt as a causation of very many problems that we have, the, the impact on the heart diseases. Even salt, we need to eat in moderation. One of the problems, when you are found with high blood pressure, if you reduce weight, you reduce salt intake, and you engage in exercise, you may throw away the, the, you may not need the medicine that you are taking. So we need to reduce the amount of salt that we take. So the Adventist Health message advocates, recommends the vegetarian diet. Not as a method of scoring points or being holy or to be chosen a deacon, no. Sometimes it's very difficult. We say that the money used in buying meat would purchase a good variety of fruits and vegetables and grains, but I don't know whether this is true. I found meat is getting cheaper than these other things. But it is because of our planning process. You know, if you look at Nairobi, for example, the part of Nairobi which can grow vegetables and fruits and, and, and trees and so forth and, and a lot of vegetables and fruits if you go to Rwanda, I don't know, going like this, it's now being converted into a jungle. But the part which has grows nothing this way, Kitui, oh, this other side where nothing grows. So if you want to bring us... Food security. If food is the... From... <laughs> If you are to build a city, no, it's a promise because there's nothing you can do with that land, the building. We must also not waste our land. Even at home, when people are building their homes, I see them putting so much, putting, putting the prime land is where they build their home. That the, the land which can be used for nothing else is what they, I mean, not yet. 
We advocate a life of service at peace with God and with the man. The Christian lifestyle is a response to salvation through Christ. All true obedience comes from the heart. If we consent, he will so identify himself with our thoughts and aims that when obeying him, we shall be carrying out our own, uh, carrying out our own impulses. The will, the will refined and sanctified will find its highest delight in doing his service. So what is a message in conclusion? Eat breakfast, cut out empty and refined foods, eat more fruits and vegetables, learn to fast, do not eat between meals, get plenty of exercise, reprogram your mind by resting. You know, in the 1960s, this message was ridiculed. In the 70s and 80s, it was tolerated. In 90s, it was acclaimed. It was accepted. But now it is acclaimed. Why is everybody adapting our message while us, we are not just sitting on the fence? What are we going to do with our health message? Are we going to continue ignoring it and attending camp meeting after camp meeting without changing? Are we going to learn all we can about it? Don't live here without buying a book outside there. The Advent. I said, what, what book did I say? Councils on Diet and Food under Ministry of Healing. Don't live here without those two books. Thank you very much. I think I'll stop there. So if I'm not inviting again, I have no problem. Praise God. I hope we adopt the health message and buy a book outside there. Uh, I'd like to invite the ECD model choir for an item to finish.
Let me 